Okay, you should have already seen the video on the human vision system and the anatomy of the eye and how that works. We're going to take that knowledge and we're going to apply it to the actual design of a user interface. Okay, the key things we want to look at today are the periphery and the macula. Now let's remember their differences. The periphery is low resolution. It's got a lot of rods, but they're scattered over a wide area. It's gray because rods can't sense color. They only sense grayscale, but it's fast. We've got all of this area. We've got all of this area for the uh, periphery that's all sensing what's going on. So we actually get a wide field of view. It's very nice. Low resolution. It's fast because it happens in parallel. Our brain. Macula, however, high resolution. Lots of sensors crammed into that little tiny space. Just right there. Lots and lots of sensors. That's where most of our cones are. Cones, 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 and cones. So we get great color perception. But it's slow. I take this little tiny spot and I move it around by physically moving my eye using these muscles up here. I physically move my eye around. I can do it very fast. I can do it five times a second. But what I've got is this little tiny peephole to look through. Okay, so that's the visual system. Let's look at how this actually plays out in being able to build user interfaces. Okay, let's take this document for example. What I have is I have a standard document. It's got some headings. It's got bullets. It's got underlined things here. Now let's take a look at what this looks like to our periphery. Okay, this is what our periphery sees. It's gray and it's blurry. But the good news here is, look at this. See how easy it is for my periphery to find where the boundaries are between paragraphs? Nice big chunks of white space. That really helps. So I can jump boring paragraph, good paragraph, I can do that really quick. Notice also the use of bold right here on the headings. Now the headings don't separate very well, but the use of bold actually makes that dark. So I can say, what are the important lines? This one's more important than that because it's darker. Look at this nice thing with our bullets. See that indentation, that white space makes those bullets stand out. Going from bullet to bullet to bullet is really easy for our periphery. Now we like that because we look at this entire image simultaneously through our periphery. This is what we see and we can find these bullets, we can find these headings, we can find these paragraph gaps very fast. It's one of the reasons why we like to organize documents like this. Okay, here's a segment out of, a, uh, out of Wikipedia on Benjamin Franklin. Notice we've got some blue links in here. These links are selectable so that we can go to other pages from within Wikipedia. So these links are good for us. Now, let's look at, first we're going to blur it. We've left the color in, so this isn't exactly <coughs> what your periphery sees, because your periphery doesn't see this color. But, as your eye is scanning across there, your eye will pick out those colors, but mostly it's going to pick it out as you read Notice this is relatively featureless, and one of the things we're following and tracking right here is these lines. We'll come back and talk about that scanning a little bit later. These lines right here. Now, here we are, completely grayscale. This is what the periphery sees. Notice that right here where that blue was, it doesn't stand out. If I look very carefully, it's a little bit lighter. It's a little bit lighter than the surrounding text, but other than that, it does not stand out at all. So if you're expecting color to help you rapidly find something in parallel with your periphery, it's not going to happen. Now, if your macula happens to scan across there, if during a saccade you pass across that, you'll see the color and remember it and be able to come back to it. But just first blush looking at a user interface, that color is not going to help you. Okay, since this course is intended for computer scientists, we need to talk about code. Here's a piece of code. I don't even know what it does. I grabbed it off the internet. 
it looks like it's a uh, standard sort of formatting that we would see in lots of user interfaces for programming. So let's look first what happens when we blur it and we gray it. Now, here's the good thing right here. See, there's the beginning of that method. There's the beginning of that class. There's that first declaration. Here's a group of declarations. Here's the try catch block. I can pick these things out very easily because of the indentation. What that indentation is doing is it's giving me targets for my periphery. I look at the entire thing and if my eye is right down here and I say where's the beginning of the method, it's right there. I don't have to scan. My periphery knows right where it is. It's right there. Where's the beginning of the catch try lock? It's right there. I get this because indentation helps. Now notice the color didn't do me so much. It's going to help me when I read that line to know what those things are. But rapid finding of something on the screen, not so much. Notice how these scroll bars are really easy to find. Those scroll bars, I can pick them out. Where do I find the current? I had a lot of files up here, the current one. That one's easy to find. All these things, by organizing my user interface in this way, it made it really easy for my periphery in parallel to find interesting targets for me. Okay, let's go back to that piece of text that we talked about before. Here's the piece of text that had the bullets in it. Now I'm going to change that piece. Of, uh, remember we blurred it. We saw lots of good things. Show it to you again. See that white space between the lines? That increase in line spacing made it so much easier to make that tracking from here to here because I have that white space line to follow. My original one, which was single spaced, that's harder. Okay, now let's take some of our macula and periphery knowledge and let's do a little web page analysis. Here's some steps. I got six of them, five of them for you here. So we're just, first thing we're going to do is we're going to make a list of what are the things we want to do, the top tasks that we want to do with our web page. Then we'll take a screenshot of the web page and we're going to circle where on that web page those tasks are located. One of the things about user interfaces is finding what I need is a really important part of designing that interface. Next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take that screenshot and I'm going to blur it and circle the points, not the ones that are my task, but the ones that are most visually interesting, the ones that really stand out. Then I'm going to take that same image and I'm going to gray it and I'm going to do that thing again. And then I'm going to compare all those circles. I'm going to compare what was visually interesting to what really helped me get my task done. Okay, so the best way to do this is do an example. So let's start out. My tasks, I want to buy some play tickets. Task number one, what are the plays that are playing? What have I got to choose from? Task number two, since I'm looking at a national website, what shows are available near where I live? I don't want to travel. I want to go to something close by. And of course, with all of these things, what do they cost? Because they typically are expensive. So I want to know what they cost. So for me as a customer at this website, these are my top three. Here's a site. It's called Telecharge. So let's take task number one, which is what plays are showing. Well, there they are right there. List of plays that are available. It's actually a scrolling list, so there's more than that. Okay, what's going nearby? I've actually got a couple of ways to do that. I've got this city venue thing here that I can search on, or I can actually have this online box office thing here. So I can select a city, or I can select a venue. Either one. Over here, select shows. Now, my, remember my third task was what do they cost? Guess what? First failing of this website, it's nowhere to be found. There is no pricing information anywhere. They probably did that on purpose, and we'll talk about that in a second. Okay, here's my first step. I made it blurry. And I've circled in green here the things that I see are most interesting. So visually, this top bar stands out. With that color, that just stands out really bright. Notice there are these two really hot blue spots. They stand out from this light background. 
And then over here are these list of color spots. Now there's actually some more down here too. But these are the ones that when I looked at this, I said, ah, that row right there, that hot spot, that hot spot, that thing there, those stand out to me. Okay, let's get rid of the color, get a good periphery view. All right, this thing still dark against the light background, dark, dark against light, dark against light, stands out really well. My periphery is going to find that, find that, find that. Over here, not so much. Notice over here that in the gray level, these guys kind of faded away. These guys kind of faded away. So these are the ones I saw were, maybe I could circle that one right there. These are the ones that really stood out for me when I first looked at this site in the grayscale. This is what my periphery would see. That This thing right here just disappeared. Okay, I've got these two things right here. These two things, they stood out big and hot. Guess what they are? Preview the new layout. Really? The most important thing I have to tell you is that I'm changing my layout. New previews in the all-new Telecharge beta. Second most important thing I have to tell you is I'm going to do a beta release of my website. This is really self-centered design. Nobody cares. Make those, pro make those secondary. People come to my website, I want to pick some plays to watch. I want to find out what's going on near my city. Not so good design in this particular website. Okay, so in a quick summary, web page analysis. Make a list of the top tasks. Take a screenshot, circle where those tasks are located. Blur it, circle them. Bl gray it, circle them. Now what I've got is what's most visually interesting. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to compare what's most visually interesting to what my periphery actually sees. Am I using my knowledge of the anatomy, anatomy of the eye to guide you very fast to the things I really want you to see? Now, for this website, in many cases, what the user wants and what the website owner wants are not the same thing. And I took a user perspective in this case. So one of the reasons that, for example, the prices were not present on this website is because this particular vendor wants to get you committed to a play and get committed to a venue before they break the bad news of the $150 it's going to cost you to go to attend this play. So your desires as a user and the desires of the people who are designing the site are not the same. And you should build this from the point of view of what you're trying to accomplish as a site owner. Okay. All of this analysis came about because of our knowledge of the anatomy of the eye. The periphery gave us low resolution, but grayscale, but very fast because it can see so very much. There's lots of cones, rods out there. The macula gave us high resolution, color, but it's slow. The saccade. Five times per second is all we can do. So what we're going to do is we're going to design our user interfaces so that key things are easy to find for our periphery. That will make targeting very fast. And that will allow people to get to the things they really want to know as quick as possible.